Introducing the all new Corolla. The good news is, you know, the, the winds uh, were not at typhoon strength, but they were at high tropical storm strength. And we had a uh, Roughly a foot of water that hit to hit us in 24 hours. That's a lot of rain, and and there was flooding in many areas. But if you take a look uh, in the condition of the Guam infrastructure during the typhoon, I mean, excuse me, during the the storm, as well as the aftermath in terms of recovery, I believe that we 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 did a pretty darn good job. There were some pockets of power outages in various parts of the island. Parts of Talafofo and Narahan were without power. Jotnia Mayor Ken Joada says that parts of his village were without power for nearly two days. In the Menengan area, power went out on Tuesday night, well before the storm's closest point of approach, and wasn't restored until late yesterday. Wimmerd Hills was without power since about 8 a.m. on Wednesday. Palantat was without power from about 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Wednesday. But by today, all of those areas had power restored. Mayor Ada says there was also a small landslide in Menengan that blocked the road for a while. The landslide in Menengan, um, basically, you know, due to the heavy rains, uh, we have a high uh, wall which ha actually has no retaining wall along a public easement. What happened was it basically fell covering the road. We were able to remove about half of it uh, to make it passable. Ada says the rest of the rubble will be removed once the weather conditions improve. DPW Director Carl Dominguez says his crews were making the rounds yesterday before Core 1 was declared. There were some down trees. And, uh, but fortunately, uh, I did not receive a report that a, a major routed road was completely blocked. So uh, I, I actually uh, inspected the, the southern roads with uh, Am Ambrose Constantino of uh, Homeland Security, and we saw three or four down trees, but fortunately the trees uh, blocked maybe one of several lanes or one of two lanes, so the roads were passable. Uh, down in Maleso, however, there was uh, a couple of spots where there is uh, uh, serious flooding, always floods in these areas uh, during uh, storms and heavy rain events. Some of the major flooding was down in the village of Tumon. That is one of the hot bond projects uh, um, that, it, that is on the list, and I think it's actually the second largest uh, ticket item in terms of uh, proposed budget. After the museum, which is roughly around $27 million, uh, there is a, uh, a, a large project that would handle the two-month flooding, especially over by the, um, the Fujita pump station area where that ponding basin is. Pangolinan says it'll take a few years before these flood mitigation projects are designed, constructed, and completed. Some village roads had bad flooding, for example, in Hagatnya on West O'Brien Drive behind the district court. It's just a bad situation. It's just a, a level road, and uh, the, the storm drainage system there is just, it's just not adequate. And, you know, and all that water just gathers there. It has nowhere to go. Dominguez says the drainage system needs to be rebuilt, but there is currently no funding for this, and federal funds only apply to Guam's primary or routed roads and not the island's village streets. There was a study done by our consultants uh, back in 2010, uh, the, and it's the village, village uh, flooding mitigation um, study. And uh, in 2010, they, the consultants estimated the cost to be in the neighborhood of $170 million. However, the main or primary roads were pretty clear. Even Polaris Point and Pago Bay were passable. Pago Bay used to be completely flooded during heavy rains, but DPW crews have kept the drainage area in Pago Bay clear. 